Analyzing natural experiments are basically the same thing as analyzing randomized experiments once you have the as-if randomization assumption. So we're going to go through two examples to talk about where these assumptions come from and how you check them. The first one we'll look at is the effect of having property rights on your behavior. Okay? More specifically, suppose we took squatters who are living on land that they don't own, and then we give them rights to the land. What's going to happen? Okay? Well, some economists look at this in a paper from 2004, and they argued that under the security provided by proper legal land titles, saying that they actually own the land, the people on the land are going to do things like um, invest in improvements in water distribution. Okay? They're going to do um, invest in sewage control, treatment of fecal matter, uh, treatment of garbage disposal, safety, how good the heating system is, air ventilation, quality of the soil, etc., etc., etc. Basically, the idea is they own the land, so they have a reason, an incentive to invest in improving it. Okay? And those investments might affect the quality of life for their kids, and so it may affect how healthy their kids are. And so, therefore, there may be this uh, pathway from having property rights to having uh, healthy children. So that's what these guys are going to look at in this paper. And they're going to use an as-if natural experiment to do it. So here's what they found. Well, they came across this very unique situation that happened in Argentina in 1981. So in 1981, about 1,800 families were living in about two square kilometers of wasteland outside of Buenos Aires in Argentina. Now, these occupants were basically landless citizens who were organized by the Catholic Church, and they purposely wanted to avoid creating a shantytown. So they partitioned the land into small, urban-shaped parcels. And at the beginning of this occupation, they thought, the church and all the people who lived there, thought that the land was owned by the state. Okay? So that's where they were living. And I'm paraphrasing from the paper here, by the way. So what actually happened? Well, three years later, they, di they discovered that the land they were living on actually wasn't owned by the government. It was actually owned by private citizens. So three years later, the government said, uh, we're going to just take that land from the private citizens and give it to the squatters. Now, some of the previous citizens who owned this land said, OK, fine. That's fine. They accepted compensation, some, some money, in exchange for their land. But some of the other people who used to own this land, they said, no, I don't think so. You're not taking my land. And they fought the government in court. So basically what happened was 1,800 families were split into two groups. The first group was able to obtain property rights to the land they lived on because they lived on land where the owner didn't fight the government. The other families did not get proper property rights because they lived on land where the owners chose to fight the government. Okay? So if we believe that this is an as-if random split of families into these two groups, then all we have to do is compare outcomes of the groups, the people who got property rights, with the outcomes of the people who didn't get property rights in order to learn about the causal effect of having property rights to your land on things like your children's health. Okay, so now how do we justify this as-if randomization assumption? Well, they're basically going to do two things. First, they're going to do balance checks. They're going to first look at the pre-treatment variables of the squatters, okay, the people who lived on the land. They're going to look at their age, sex, citizenship, and education. And they're going to argue that these variables are balanced across treatment and control. So it's not like the treatment group, the people who got property rights, are much, much older than the people who didn't get property rights, for example. They're also going to look at the observed pre-treatment variables of the parcels, the actual pieces of land that they lived on. These are the distance of, from the parcel to a polluted creek, okay? the size of the parcel, the distance from this parcel to a non-squatter area in Buenos Aires. And they're going to say, well, these variables are also balanced across the treatment and the control group. So it's not like the groups that had, um, that didn't get property rights, for example, were very far from the city or very close to polluted creeks, while the land that did get property rights was close to the city and far from polluted creeks. Okay, that's not true. It's actually the roughly equal distance on, on average. Okay, so 
This is exactly what we, what we would see if we had true randomization. Now the problem is, we can't check balance for variables we don't observe. If we had true randomization, then we, then we would be guaranteed that all variables, we, whether they're observed or unobserved, are balanced. But with as-if randomization, we can never really know if the unobserved variables are balanced or not. But, you know, it's still a good check uh, to make sure that, that we do see balance on what we do observe. So that's the first piece of evidence they give. The second piece is they give an enormous amount of qualitative evidence. So f first, they argued that the squatters didn't even know that the land was privately owned when they were settling. So it's not like they could have picked and choose which land they wanted to live on. You know, they didn't know that some land would have ended up with property rights and some land wouldn't. You know, suppose they did. Okay, why would that be a problem? Well, then maybe you know the the more the slightly more educated, the, the higher ability, more persuasive squatters could have managed to get their way onto the land that was going to get property rights, um, whereas the sort of less persuasive, um, less influential squatters were stuck with the land that wasn't going to get property rights. Okay, that would create an unbalance across these two treatment groups that would be uh, introduce con possible confounders. Okay, and so comparing the outcomes between these two groups would could be chalked up to this, this difference in persuasiveness or influentialness of the squatters and not to the actual treatment effect, the fact that some people actually had property rights and the others didn't. Okay. So but they say that's not the case because nobody knew that this land was not owned by the government when it was settled. So second, they also do a ton of interviews and qual other qualitative field work. And summarizing all of this, you know, this was interviewing people on the land, interviewing owners. Why did some owners decide to fight the government? Why didn't they? They basically argue that the, just, the reasons that some owners decided to fight the government and others didn't was just idiosyncratic, okay? There's unrelated to, say, how valuable the land was, okay? It would be really, really bad um, for, this, for the authors if the owners who fought the government were also the owners who had the most valuable land for some reason. Okay, that would be bad because then that would be another uh, confounder, another thing that's not balanced across the treatment and control group. And we wouldn't know if, if we compared outcomes of these two groups. We wouldn't know if differences in outcomes is due to the property rights or, different, or because this land is more valuable on average in the treatment group than in the control. Okay? But they argue that that's not the case, that it's just idiosyncratic, basically random. Okay? So... That's what they'd use to justify their assumption. And then they're going to move on in the next few modules. We'll look at what effects they actually found when they compare outcomes in the treatment and control group. And one lesson to take away from this paper is that it's really important to get a good qualitative understanding of the context in order to justify um, your as-if randomization uh, assumptions.